All right. I was driving yesterday. And I told Becca the story already. I was driving, leaving our property, and I turned to go back onto the highway by Xclawacon, and a man in front of me in a really beat up little truck had a piece of rope hanging off the side of the truck, and it hit the road, and it uncoiled as he drove away. And it was about 100 feet of rope or 80 feet of rope. And you know what's really weird is like your, 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 your brain is like, oh, I should stop and get that rope. You know, you just kind of automatically think, well, that's, you know, it's a piece of rope I could. But I thought, no, no, no. So I drove up his head as fast as I could. And I got beside him and I rolled down the window and I, I said in my, my, the best Spanish I could, you, you lost your rope back there, you know, go, go back. And he said, oh, thank you. Thank you. And he turned around immediately and went back and I did the underpass and came back out. And um, I'm watching over the other side as his son is curling up the rope. And I don't know why, but I started crying. And the Lord made it aware to me that to a poor man, a piece of rope is precious. To a poor man, a piece of rope is precious. And what's precious to us? What's precious to me and you? And it just so struck me um, how important this this little this possession was to him. And then I thought about the poor people and how they don't waste anything, and everything is reused, and everything is is precious for them because it's hard to get. It's difficult to achieve that thing, to get that thing. And then I thought about how all of us are poor in spirit. And that the Lord reminds us of our need for him and that we are poor in spirit. And that, and that talk that, that Nan gave today and that reminder of Jesus fulfilling um, all these prophecies and all of these ways that we, that we can see him within the biblical truths, within the feasts, within the ceremonies, within all of those things he is displayed because all of us are poor. And all of us are in need of a of a savior. And I think that's the, really it, isn't it? That we might be rich in resources, but are we rich in faith? Are we rich in faith? You know, it's just, again, the, the poor person appreciates the smallest thing. The littlest thing means a lot to them. And so again, what is precious to us? Because I think sometimes uh, being wealthy, whatever that looks like, it's all perspective, right? But being wealthy is a disadvantage because we're not driven in a daily way for this need just to survive, just to live, to manage. Um, the, the poor, the downtrodden need the Lord. It's not just in the sense that we need the Lord in order to be saved, in order to, um, to enter into the kingdom. They need the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread becomes a daily prayer because it's real for them. Because it's real for them. Because you, you, you have men who are seeking to make sure that their family is taken care of, that there's a roof over the head, that they are fed in a provocatively immediate sort of way. And I think, in fact, I know that within that, the Lord works in miraculous ways, that he draws people into himself even more who lean on him in that kind of fullness and that type of reliance. And so they tend to have a passion for God that is is really impactual um and and i think there's a lot we can learn from the people who are poor and who yearn for god yearn for his help and cry out to him because at our heart we are no different so again to a, a poor man a rope is precious a piece of rope is precious. What's precious to us? 
what's precious to us what is that rope and it comes back again to what nan was saying what's needs to be precious to all of us is our relationship with jesus christ there's a, a passage in hebrews eleven six that says it is impossible to please god without faith it is impossible to please god without faith and anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Well, I used one scripture, Cynthia. <laughs> Thank you for finding that. It, and it's so interesting because the Lord, when he, that's in reference to Enoch. And that Enoch was a man who pleased God with his life. That he did all things for the Lord and devoted his life to the Lord. And the Lord was so, if you like, pleased with him that he took him up into heaven while he was still alive. And then the writer of Hebrews says, it is impossible to please God without faith. And so we look and we we wonder, is it is it is is that the kind of person that we are? Are we someone who's desiring, who has a passion to please God with our life? Or are we more about pleasing ourselves? And so that is this question. And then again, I think for those who are really struggling in their life because the Lord has not blessed them with great resources, um, their daily need for God, that need to turn to him and rely on him is an advantage for them. They may not see it that way. But the need to have your faith and your trust fully on God, moment to moment, is something wonderful and beautiful. And so the challenge is, how do we do that? How do we do that when things are going well? How do we have that kind of a passion and a yearning and a reliance on God? That kind of a faith, that our desire is to please God, yeah, even when things are going well. Right, And then that we were reminded again um, of our need for him, that he is the one who saves us from our sin. In, in 2 Corinthians 8 verses, uh, chapter, or chapter 8 verse 9, it says, You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. And I just think it's so ironic that the Lord uses those exact terms, that he made himself poor. Now, it's referring to that he went to the cross for us. But even when you look at his life and how he lived, he says, foxes have dens, right? And birds have nests, but the, the man of God has no place to lay his head when others sought to follow him. He did not live a life of luxury or... Uh, Instead, he, his focus was on doing the things of the Father, seeking the will of the Father, following the will of the Father, glorifying the Father. He sought to please God with his life, to please the Father with his life. And so, too, we are called to do that. And then, too, I think of that, the poor widow, the one who, as they watched, um, and that the Jesus watched her give all that she had left into the offering, right? Into the, for, for a tithe, into the, the temple. And Jesus said, I tell you, she gave more than everyone else because she gave from everything she had left. She had gave from everything. And there's a sense in that, not that Jesus was saying she's going to be repaid financially a hundred times over. But he was talking about her heart and her passion that her desire was to please God, that her desire was to live by great faith and to please the Lord. And, I'll, and I know, I absolutely know that that lady was taken care of, that her needs were met because that's who God is. He is a gracious and loving God who's real and alive and active. And when we put our trust in him and our faith in him and we seek to please him, he takes care of us. Um, and so... You know, there, there's a great many who struggle every day and they pray to the Lord and they can probably tell you that every single day he blesses them with having what they need. 
and so I, I just want to, to end on that note that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that the desire he has for us is to have that great God and to spend our lives seeking to please him and not ourselves. And, and that's the message. Are we desiring to please God with our lives? Because he says, if you do that, you will inherit an eternal kingdom and an eternal city. And Nan, everything that you spoke of and, and look to ends up in an eternal city in Jerusalem on the Mount of Zion where the Lord reigns and we are with him. That's why we have faith. That's why we seek to please God, because we know the end. And knowing the end gives us hope. Knowing the end gives us a passion. Knowing the end helps us to maintain that righteousness that Christ has imbued upon us. And so, knowing the end, knowing that we will end up in this eternal kingdom for the glory of God, helps us to go forward. And Because some days are tough, right? Sometimes it's really hard to go forward because the journey's not easy and the Lord didn't say it was going to be easy but he says hold your faith in me seek to please God instead of please yourself do what is right and good pleasing the Lord and you're going to end up in this eternal city amen dig into the deeper things amen. of God and to see him revealed more and more in the scriptures and so I would encourage you um, to dig into Hebrews chapter 11 to really look at that, about faith, about the faith of the saints who came before us, the faith of the warriors even of God, and the faith of those who are destitute, poor, and martyred, and how the Lord reminds us that it is impossible to please God without faith. And to examine, is, it, is that your desire? Is it your desire to please, to please God with your life? Is that your desire? And then I want you to think, that for a poor man, even a piece of rope is precious. And what's precious to us? What is precious to us? So these are things I'd like you to think on in the next week. And I just pray that the Lord would bless and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace. Amen.